Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Armor Investing. I'm Brett Rosenthal. This is uh, a live look into a virtual hedge fund experience. So ran hedge funds for over a decade, been running personal capital, private capital for over 30 years. And I'm sharing with you the Armor Investing way, which is basically taking day trading tools, swing trading tools, and investing techniques, putting them all together and creating a successful strategy. So I'm going to share it with you and we're going to break it down tonight into um, kind of three distinct categories. We're going to go over the kind of the most important chart patterns of the week for us from last week. Then we're going to talk about what stocks to buy that are the things we've been buying in our portfolio. Maybe we're going to buy them next week. So these are thoughts of how we're going to be running our money. And then I'll share with you top stocks to watch that are like at the top of our whiteboard of companies we may want to invest in. So um, charts of the week, stocks to buy, stocks to watch. And this is all for somebody who, um, you know, is self-directing their own portfolio and wants to really get off the hamster wheel of the noise around you and just execute strategy that makes money and protects capital. That's what we're doing. All right. So um, I like to say that it's virtual hedge fund desk. This is how I run my own personal capital. You're the portfolio manager sitting down with me on a Sunday night, getting ready for the week ahead in the stock market. How are you going to invest in the stock market in the week ahead? Or how are you going to protect capital? How are you going to manage risk? These are the things we're going to talk about. You're the portfolio manager. Take the information and make it your own. Figure out what your risk tolerance is, your goals are, and then execute from there. Okay. So, um, Let's dive right in, try to, you know, really be uh, um, focused on, on what we discussed tonight. And then as always, I'm willing to take questions. If you guys have anything you want to chat about, just throw it up into the comment section. Um, and I will definitely get to the Q&A at the end of, you know, just some thoughts here on what were the most important charts of last week and how that affects this week. What are the stocks to buy, the stocks that we are buying, and then stocks that are at the top of our whiteboard or basically stocks to watch. So let's um, dive right in. As always, don't forget, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel right down here. You can also take a look at joining us on the desk every day. We're live like this all day, sharing information with Armor Insiders uh, and, and executing day trading, swing trading, and investing strategies. Let, let me just kind of give you some thoughts real quick on the difference between how somebody successfully runs money and and, and um, maybe somebody who's new to the game, a little unsure, what are the things that trip them up? In, in my opinion, the biggest mistake that an individual investor makes is they, they fall in love with an idea, an investment idea, and they just throw it in the portfolio. Then they do research, then they do work, and when the stock goes down, they pretend they're long-term holders. Does that sound familiar? I can see you in the back right there. <laughs> you just looked away. I'm talking to you, right? You, you don't want to do that. You want to execute like a professional um, fund manager. And the way we execute is we take an idea, a kernel of an idea, something we want to invest in. We put it up on the whiteboard, whiteboard back there, okay? We categorize it, figure out what group it's in, what sector it's in, Okay. Then what we do is we do our research, fundamental stuff, make sure it's a stock we want to own. So you like an idea, it goes in the whiteboard, not in the portfolio. That's step one. Then what we do is use day trading techniques to get on a new idea. So when we like the idea, we want to get long, we use day trading tools. I don't go to bed at night with a new position that's losing money. I put a position on using day trading tools that increases the probability of success investing. And if I'm making money at the end of the day, I have a decision to make. Do I book a profit, make it a day trade? Do I hold it overnight as a swing trade? It's still not an investment yet. Okay. We, we switch over to swing trading algorithms. We say, okay, we got the day trade, right? We're making money. Do we want to hold it overnight? Yes. The swing trade algo is giving us a confirmation, a a, a buy trigger that says this is the right day. Okay. So now we're going to hold it overnight and we're going to monitor that position closely the next 15 to 30 trading sessions with fairly tight stops. Okay. And we're going to use those stops and see if the position hits a stop. We book a small profit. It's a swing trade or excels 
and then it becomes an investment. It earns the right to be an investment. You never want to force your will on the market and say, this is an investment. It's a long-term hold. How do you know that? You, you don't know that. The position has to perform in a manner where it becomes a long-term hold because you're managing success, meaning you're making money in that position and you're moving your stops accordingly and you're booking profits at targets and you're trading around a core position that blossoms into an investment. Those are the stages you want to try to focus on. All right. So let's dive into the action last week. Fed meeting, you know, um, earnings announcements from the big seven tech companies, right? All of these things created a lot of volatility last week and one really bad day on Thursday, which was rescued by Friday. And so those of you following the Armour Report, Armour Investing for a while, know that we have a risk monitor, right? We risk monitor green, yellow, red. Simple, simple way to understand what the algorithms are telling us. We look at nine indexes and the treasury market, long-term bonds. When the nine equity indexes give us risk on it at the same time, within a 48-hour window, that's what turns us risk monitor green. We ride the wave as long as we can. We've been on that trade since June 1st. Nothing has changed after last week. Still risk monitor green. This means for our index-only portfolio, which is an easy way to follow the strategy, when we get risk on green, we put all the money to work in those nine indexes, equally weighted. If it turns yellow, we cut the positions by a quarter or a half. If it turns red, we go 100% cash. We wait for the next signal. So it's swing trading the indexes, okay? So nothing's changed there. That's step one. Let's take a quick dive into what the markets looked like this week so we can understand why the risk monitor is still green. I spoke to some of you, if you're following, if, if you're following me on YouTube, you guys can go subscribe to that right now so you get the updates. Um, I shared this information with you on Friday morning. We talked about that ugly reversal day Thursday and what it might mean for today, uh, for the end of the week. So let's take a look what happened. This is the S&P. First of all, everyone likes to say how much it's up right now, but at the end of the day, it's just recently broken out above the high of when the Fed started raising rates. And now the Fed's close to close to the end of raising rates. So it's not hard from a big picture macro idea to understand why the market's starting to go up now. It digested all the rate hikes. And now we're closer to, you know, as cessation of that increase in rate hikes. So the market's starting to break out. That's a simple way to understand the fundamentals of the market. On this desk, price action is all. So I don't really care, you know, I don't really care about explaining why something's happening. That's what most people like to do on Twitter. It's a total waste of time, right? Using a crystal ball and guessing where the market's going to go next is, is an absolute joke. It's just um, somebody who likes to hear themselves talk for the simple reason that the, the conversation is static and the market's dynamic. We don't know what's going to happen next. So price action is all. That's what we focus on on our desk. And so what happened was, yeah, Thursday was a terrible day. That was a nasty inside out reversal day. And then it had a real nice close Friday. So what I like to say to you all when it comes to the risk monitor is look at, look at the weekly chart. Okay. So it's, it's going to take a weekly close to, rev to, to change the risk monitor color. The purpose of the risk monitor is not to trade ferociously, right? We bought the indexes uh, June 1st. And we've held them all the way through and we're capturing some pretty solid upside in the last two months. And what we don't do is take one day and turn the picture, right? It'll take at least one week, maybe more before we got risk monitor red, right? So let's say yesterday the market cratered. It was two terrible down days. And instead of having a nice blue up bar here, we had a big down candle. All right, maybe the risk monitor would go yellow at that point. But in all honesty, if you look at the uptrend here, the market's in a pretty solid uptrend and a pullback to the 50 day, the black line or the 25 day would not be disastrous. It would be a normal, you know, I think, normal pullback and a major uptrend. So risk monitor may change, but it didn't change uh, on, on Friday because of the weekly charts. You could see 
the um, the Dow has a nice weekly breakout on an unbelievable chart pattern there. Um, small caps. These are some of the indexes we own. Okay. Um, NASDAQ 100 had a great close to the week. Equally weighted index had a great close to the week. That's a NASDAQ 100 equally weighted. Here's the S&P equally weighted. I was worried about this on Thursday. I thought it might have a double top, but it closed, you know, in a reasonable realm for the week. And then here's the value index just now coming out of a bottoming wedge. So if you're honest with yourself and with me on this conversation right now, and you shut off all the noise around you of everybody trying to sound smart and you just look at price, there's nothing that would tell you the market's not, market's not going higher from here. Nothing. So what we do is we use stops, right? And we just move the stops up as we go. At some point, we'll get stopped out. And I'll come on here and say, hey, it's risk monitor red, right? Or risk monitor yellow. But that didn't happen last week. So I raised cash Thursday, booking profits everywhere. And I started putting that money back to work Friday into some of the same names, into some of the new names. In fact, some of the things I love to do is take positions that I that I bought right in a portfolio that have risen, consolidated, and are about to break out again and increase the size. So let's go now to stocks to, to buy. Well, before I do that, let me just show you a couple charts that that I would say give me give me pause. I don't want to sound too bullish on this call right now. Okay. So steady as she goes, things look okay. No change to the risk monitor. Here are the things that would concern me for next week. So keep your eye on it. I call these um, stock charts that were important last week, and I'm going to be watching this week. Okay. So maybe you want to call it stocks in focus, whatever you want to call it. Okay. This is the this is the uh, treasury uh, market, long-term treasury bonds. Something's not right about long-term treasury bonds. It makes me very uncomfortable when the NASDAQ 100 does this, okay, and treasury bonds do that. Some, something's not right there. And, and um, I, I really want to see long-term treasuries break the downtrend and start to join the rest of the market, okay? So... I don't need that for the market to keep going up. I think that people who draw an analogy to uh, bonds and stocks today are using static analysis from the last 50 years. Okay. They were doing the same thing, you know, in 2022 and they were totally wrong. Right. Remember that was like a hundred percent correlation as opposed to, you know, a balanced portfolio. So we went through a pandemic and a, bizarre um um bizarre decision makings from politicians in the fed that led to extremes on one end and now we're getting kind of back and um, the fed's trying to get back to something more normal and so i don't think you can draw an immediate line from here to here and say well bonds are breaking down so the so equities have to break down i understand that i've been doing this over 30 years i get it but I think that's missing the dynamic of the world we live in today. So if stops are hit, I'll raise cash and I'm going to watch treasuries. If they crater down here, then it makes me more concerned and maybe I raise stops. But as long as treasuries stay above, you know, kind of in this white box in here, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make me too, too concerned. Now let's go and look at junk bonds. Junk bonds tend to lead equities. So I really didn't like that HYG uh, um, breakdown, what it looked like a breakdown on Thursday, but it recovered Friday. So there's nothing really wrong with junk bonds. And quite frankly, that looks like an unbelievable bottoming wedge to me. All right. So if you, it, so this is really the um, um, chart that I think carries a little more weight with, with, with equities right now. I don't know what treasuries are doing and they're being a little bit manipulated. Okay. But as long as junk bonds aren't breaking down, you know, market can continue to grind higher. So junk bonds, treasuries, I'm watching those closely. And let's round it out with um, the U.S. dollar. OK, so we know the dollar broke down hard two weeks ago, rallied back last week, the week before. So let's watch this and see, do we make new lows in here or does this this area hold? I don't know exactly what this is doing right now. And I think I'd have to 
change from a from a from a wedge to something more like I don't know something more like that. Let's change the color to white because I don't know if this is going to end up being a consolidation and a breakout or a consolidation and a breakdown. So we just have to watch that. And you know, for those of you new to this game, if it breaks out to the upside, that's bearish. To the downside, that's bullish for equities. Okay. And then here's the last thought I have for you on, on stocks that were in focus on our desk last week. What is going on with uh, utilities? Utilities are actually trying to break out of this bottoming wedge, even though TLT is going lower. So can you get utilities to go up with long-term treasury bonds going down? I don't know. I don't, that's going to be weird. That's going to be a strange market we're in. All right. So let's um, skip over now to stocks to buy. These are stocks we either own or we're in the process of building positions on. And I'm going to share it with you right now. Of course, as always, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel because I share these ideas with you during the week. And if you wish, you want to join us on the desk while we're executing. So you can kind of do it in lockstep with us. Boom, right there. Armorinvesting.com. Take a look. A-R-M-R investing.com. All right. Stocks that we are buying. Stocks to buy. Here we go. I wanted to um, start with a um, list of some of our energy stocks. Okay. We bought energy down here. You know this because I've been sharing this with you. Tidewater down in here. Broke out. Made a whole new pennant. And I could be increasing my position right in here on Tidewater, okay? And the stops, just so you understand how we do this, that red bar is the stop. So we bought it in here. It blew out. It's consolidated. It made a new high. I can always add to that position. We're also past earnings announcements for something like FTI, right? We own FTI cheap down here. It blows out up to here and has this real, real kind of volatile sell-off on earnings and then recover. So if this could come out and, and make new highs, that's just a perfect high tight pennant to continue the move after what was considered a weaker than expected earnings announcement. Okay. To go along with our energy play, you guys you know, know that we're long uh, things like Diamond Offshore and Rig. I think Rig is going to announce earnings next week. So that'll be really interesting. I, you know, um, it's either going to blow this thing to the upside or, or we're going to be out of this trade. But um, I really like the drilling stocks. But to add to our energy theme, so you know we've been long these energy stocks. I'm sharing them with you on the YouTube channel during the week when we're acquiring them. Here's two other names to broaden out what we're doing. So last week, uh, or I think it was last week, I shared with you, um, maybe it was a week before, we were building positions now in the refining stocks. So we own Valero Cheap, and it's just going straight up, right? We own D-I-N-O. Those are our two favorite um, uh, um, ref oil refining uh, companies. We own them right down here and they're breaking out. We're adding now energy shipping stocks, the shipping stocks. Here's a couple names, FRO, Frontline, just now breaking out, INSW, International Seaways, just now breaking out. It doesn't get better than that chart. And look at the volume coming in as it's doing it. Look at the volume. Volume's down here. So the volume is spiking as it's breaking out. It's just what you want to see. Okay, moving on. Um, we are, you know, I think it's, it would be a mistake to write off or say that you've missed semiconductors if you didn't get them down in here. It's just a whole nother pennant formation breakout. Not even taking out the highs yet totally uh, coming on with steam in here. This is an island reversal on the whole semi-index. So there's a couple ways to play this. I could buy my favorite names or I could buy triple the S&P and get growth stock type of returns on an index without any individual stock risk. I'll leave that up to you. SOXL you know, is, is the way to do that. It's triple the uh, SOXX. So I get exposure to all the names and I get explosive growth if it works, right? So um, but, you know, Prest, my favorite semi names, Marvell, NVIDIA, obviously, and, and NVIDIA is a big part of SOXX. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but um, put this as a name, as a stock to watch 
And I think we'll do some research on it next week. And that's going to be Intel. Intel is putting in a bottom. The earnings announcement was a, it was a, a little bit of a shock to the street. Big surprise there. And um, I'm not 100% sure I'd be buying it, but it's also a Dow stock. And I, I love this Dow. I love this Dow setup. This Dow looks like, you know, I want to get exposure to Dow stocks. That looks like it's an unbelievable pennant breakout. So is Intel a way to do that cheap? Maybe. You know, maybe. I mean, even IBM is going up, and that was such a yawner of an earnings announcement. It's hard to get enthusiastic, but there goes IBM. Okay. Um, I'm kind of jumping the gun, but I have a couple other Dow stocks I'm going to show you. I'm not buying IBM, but I'm looking at uh, Intel. But let's go back to stocks to buy, stocks that we're buying in our portfolio. One of my, you know, favorite things to do and kind of what we're doing in our portfolio is a barbell approach right now where we're long uh, um, commodities in a fairly significant way focused on energy. And on the other side, we're long innovative growth, which I love. That's where I've made all my money in the last 30 years. And that's where I'm going to focus. I trade commodity names and I like to invest in, in um, um, paradigmatic growth stories. Okay. AI is an example. All right. So um, one of my top favorite AI names we added on Friday, and that's uh, IoT Samsara. Okay, and I break down AI into three categories, the builders, the beneficiaries, and the creators. The builders are like um, NVIDIA and, and AMD to a lesser extent and um, uh, Marvell, right? And the, the beneficiaries are companies like, for instance, we were adding to our Adobe position on Friday, okay? So we own Adobe Cheap. It's running up here. And, and what's happening is their current business is being accelerated because of the AI revolution. So that's a beneficiary. And then we have companies in the portfolio that are just pure creators. They use AI to create a business model. And that's what Samsara is doing. Okay. So in a bull market, this is a sick chart pattern. And that's, it came public back here, built a huge base a high tight pennant off of a blowout earnings number. Uh, I mean, if we're in the, if we're in a real bull market, we're going to hit a phase where companies that came public in the last two years, we'll call them inter new issues came public in the last two years. If we can find the right names, there will be some huge price performance, it's crazy alpha. If you can find the right new issues in a bull market, the market will, you know, first you get the Magnificent Seven that drive the whole market up and create alpha. And then they keep going up, but the alpha shifts to dynamic growth. And it's names like, I think, IoT, but other um, new issues that really um, that really start to accelerate. Here's a name that I want to add back to my portfolio. This is another kind of new issue came public back here. Big sell-off. Braze is the symbol. B-R-Z-E. Braze is the name. And I think that's uh, a name I want to get back on as well. Um, to round it out, my you know my three favorite, and this is not an exaggeration, innovative growth stocks, our trade desk, which we're on. Okay, so we bought it cheap, we traded it out, um, some of it up here, and the rest when it hit the stop. When it goes back above the stop, bought the position back. Okay, so we're long um, trade desk, or we trade it around the core. There's different ways to do that. You can book some profits up here and then buy back the position. You could book the whole thing. That depends on how aggressive you are as a trader. All right. So when I spoke before about the three stages of, you know, professionally run capital of how to build an equity portfolio for someone doing it themselves, what you want to do, it's really four steps, right? You're, you're going to start with the whiteboard and do your research. But once you've done that, there's three distinct steps to getting on an investment. It starts with a day trading tool, the swing trading tool or, you know, uh, um, algorithm confirms the day trading setup. You start making money, you manage the risk. And if you get past a certain point, now you're managing success. You go back, you change from managing risk to managing success. And once you're doing that, you're on an investment and you can trade around the core. You can use a 50 day moving average stop, let's say, and book some profits, you know, up in, you know, up in here when it gets a little bit ahead of itself and you hold that core either to the uptrend or to the 50 day, which is the black line. Okay. 
So anyway, back on um, Trade Desk, MGNI, um, and uh, and IAS. I can't go into. I don't have the time to do this again today. And if you've been watching this channel again, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, and you'll get these updates. Um, but I'm a big fan of um, those three companies, and I'm, quite frankly, I'd love to get um, Double Verity into the portfolio. And, and it's making a high pennant. I don't know if I'm going to get that one, but those would be the four stocks in my favorite. Uh, group. And now let's round it out with um, stocks to watch. And then I'll get to any of your questions. So feel free to set up, um, you know, fill out the uh, comment section with your questions and we'll go over any stock you want. What I'm going to share with you now are stocks that are top of my whiteboard, the, the watch list, right? These are things that I, I I'm going to, you know, depending on how the market unfolds next week, they may find themselves in my portfolio as an investment. OK, so let's just rattle off some quick names in here. Pacific Bioscience is at the top of my list, and it's held up really well in a tough market last week. I mean, it's just making a nice double bottom set up on the 50. Looks like it's about to break out. It can't do it without me. I love the story. OK, and um, I may be back in here, which is Arc Genomic, which covers a lot of those types of stocks. OK, now we were talking about the Dow. And so how do we get on the Dow? I can buy the Dow itself or I can try to find the best looking charts inside the Dow. I already talked about Intel and that's something we got to focus on, do some research on. I'm not sure I'm buying it yet, but I really want to get on deer. I think deer is a no brainer. This is like, I mean, what a chart pattern and set it up for deer. I should have been on it down in here and I missed that entry and it, it ran up and it's pulling back. So if I can get on deer, I will. Goldman Sachs, I, I traded it real quick. I bought it down in here and sold it out for a quick profit when the market unraveled on Thursday. I have not bought it back, but rest assured, if it takes out these highs right in there, those tails, I'm I'm probably going to have that in my portfolio again. So if it takes out like 360, I'll be I'll be back on Goldman Sachs. Here's another thing to think about. As a bull market matures, a couple of groups that capture capital. One are new issues that we talked about. And two are brokerage stocks. They really start to capture capital. So as you broaden out from the magnificent seven tech names, you start to get ideas like Goldman Sachs breaking out. JP Morgan is leading. All right, I'm not a buyer there, but I really like Charles Schwab's story. Okay. I think that's a hundred dollar stock if we're in the right market at the very least. I think it's totally misunderstood. So there's an idea I'm looking at in interactive brokers. Full disclosure, I run all my business through interactive brokers. So um, I love the platform. I, I think they do a phenomenal job. And I don't know why the chart looks this good. I'll be honest with you. I don't know why the chart looks that good. I, that's a five wave pattern that I've made a lot of money on in my career. That pattern. I don't find it very often. The time that I, times where I, it, and I shared this with you probably before you've heard me say this before, but at the turn of the century, we had human genome sciences in our portfolio. The world was mapping the human genome. The stock with the symbol HGSI was human genome sciences. <laughs> it was pretty easy. And it had this unbelievable five wave pattern that looked just like that. And the stock went to the moon. So I understood that story. I understood how big that could be. And we made a lot of money on it. I don't know why Interactive Brokers looks that good. I can't figure out the fundamentals that would make that stock go to the moon. Maybe they're just going to be acquired. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's an acquisition, though, because Pettifree has too much of the company. I don't think he's got an exit plan. So I don't know. Maybe it's just a bull market and the stock's going to break out. Could be something as simple as that. Okay. So anyway, that's that's on my list um, to uh, to buy next week or on my watch list, I should say. Um, now, I've traded on holdings uh, a couple times here. This is the sneaker company. It's another new issue idea. So, again, new issues. I'm finding room in my portfolio. Booked a profit on it up here on the big down day. Bought it down here. Booked a profit here on that big down day. And then it had a great day. For it. it touched the 50-day moving average. Closed above it. You know, not a very bad week. I mean, the weekly chart pattern looks pretty good. I probably have to get back on that story. I really like the story. And, you know, I might just raise my stop up to the low of that big down bar. And if it takes off, I've got it. And if it 
takes out that low again, I'll step aside. So um, rounding out the last idea, anybody got a question, go ahead and throw it in the comment section. Now's your, now's your opportunity. This is the last stock that's on my stocks to watch list. And then I'll get to your questions. All right, stocks to watch. MDB. I really love the MDB story. Okay. Uh, you've heard me talk about this before. It's a, a um, island reversal, which I just love. They're so hard to find. And, and to have them, have the earnings explosion be this dynamic, it caught a lot of uh, investors and analysts off guard. And if they can come behind that with more quarters like this one, this stock's going to go to the moon in the right, in the right market, in the right market. So um, I'm out of the stock right now, book the profit. I'd like to get back on it. So those are, um, those are my thoughts for tonight. Just a quick wrap up before I get to your questions. Risk monitor green, nothing changed. A tremor in the force perhaps on Thursday, but recovered Friday. Weekly candles look great. Nothing to see here. I'm looking at treasuries and junk bonds and the dollar to see if things start to get uglier. Treasuries break down, junk bonds break down, dollar breaking out to the upside. I'll get a little more concerned and I'll raise my stops faster. Okay. Um, I shared with you stocks to buy, stocks that are in our portfolio already, or we're adding to them the energy sector. We're broadening out into shipping um, stocks to watch. You know, I want to get, I want to get on some of these new issues. In fact, we were doing it at the end of, of the day on Friday. Um, some of these innovative growth stocks that if we go into that melt up phase in the market, that's where the alpha is going to be. And so I'm going to be focusing there. All right. So thanks for your time listening to me. Now it's my time to listen to you. What do you guys have to talk about? Throw it out there. and We'll go over questions together. Um, KC, how you doing, brother? Nice to see you tonight. I am. I'm having an awesome weekend. All right. Thoughts on, let's go through it. And I'm going to just take this down so you can see it. You look at the chart. Let's go over um, the chart you're looking at. B-O-R-R. -R. Yeah, I mean, so the biggest question, and Casey, we some guys on our trading desk own BOR, okay? So the, the question is, how many drilling stocks can I own? How many energy stocks can I own? This is a question I have for you guys. Because you got to think about it. You got to be a risk manager while you're a growth investor. You have to be a risk manager. So what I do is I, I come up with what, how much exposure to one group can I take in my portfolio? How much? How much is too much? It's an opportunity cost of money. There's a lot of ideas I want to own. But it's also, if something goes wrong with that theme, you don't want to blow up your whole portfolio. So, you know, I can honestly say that 25% is my targeted max exposure to any one group so that I can cover four groups and, and kind of have some diversification as the markets are going up. What would the groups be? Uh, maybe 25, I'm spitballing with you here. This is not how my portfolio looks right now, but I'm telling you what I, what I wish it looked like. All right. Maybe 25% big cap tech, 25% energy, 25% um, innovative growth. And then that last 25%, I, I, I don't know. I would say other commodities, other commodities would be that last 25%. So that would make 50% of my portfolio commodity related and 50% growth stock related whether it be big cap tech or innovative growth. So that's, that's the ideal portfolio for me right now. And I can honestly say I'm over my key, my skis. You know, I am way over my board. I'm a snowboarder. I'm way over my board in, um, in energy right now, KC. So I can't take any more, but the boring looks great. I mean, the, the energy stocks just, there's so many unbelievable chart patterns breaking out and, and, I'll tell you what's most important to me. You've had a couple of energy earnings announcements come out that were less than expected. So energy results worse than expected. And the stocks had one down day or one down hour and closed higher at the end of the day or closed higher at the end of the week. So they're just 
the, the earnings issues, nobody cares. Money's flowing into energy because of the unbelievable, if I were to give you an opinion of why in one sentence, the unbelievable idiocy of ESG over the last five years, 10 years has led to a situation, right? Where obviously, uh, um, it's led to a Don Quixote situation, right? The windmills aren't going to do it. They're not, they, forget about the bridge not being too far. The, the bridge isn't even built. And we need energy. And there's just such a lack of production because of the insanity of politicians around the world. Um, uh, and, and so it's created this opportunity. And if we're in a bull market, which we are at the moment, money's flooding into that opportunity. That's, that's the way to look at what's going on in energy to me. But I, I love that idea. So um, uh, go get it. Um, I, I, uh, I O N Q. Is this the quantum computing idea? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it was a SPAC. It got de spac and all the other SPAC ridiculousness. And now it's starting to come out as a quantum computing idea. I'm too late to the party. I see what you're on. Um, I, I generally have an issue. Um, It's it. Look, there, there's no earnings and revenue yet, right? They're losing money, and the revenue is nascent. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing really there. Okay, so it's living on a dream right now. If we're going into the market, I think we're going into the stock can go to the moon because as a bull market matures, people get more and more aggressive, and you know, you almost don't want earnings because then people can come up with insane valuations for things. They're not even valuations. They're just dreams. We saw that in 2020, 2021, you know, and they'll go up longer and faster and bigger than anybody expects. Okay. So don't let me get you off it. It's just not a name that, that makes it to my list. I, I try to have like a hard deck of where I'm, what I'm willing to invest in. And I need a certain market cap. I need a certain amount of revenue growth. I don't mind if they're losing money, but I need to see some real revenue growth in there so that I know it's a real, a real company and not just a total dreamer. You know, I did, I did work on the company really a few years ago. So I haven't done it recently, but, um, and maybe I will Casey, cause I respect, um, what you bring to the table. So maybe it's something to look at. MCHP is just such an animal. Um, but look at the weekly chart of MCHP. I mean, it's a perfect cup and handle. You're looking at an O'Neill chart now. This is a weekly chart using the IBD, which is the market smith. Um, and so there's the cup, there's the handle on a weekly level, and it looks like it's going to skyrocket. Um, I, I love the idea. My question only is, will it go up more than the index itself? Will microchip go up more than the index itself. If I think the index is going to go up more, I'd rather own the index. And quite frankly, if I want to be aggressive, I'd rather own triple the index. So now I have no individual stock risk. I'm just trying to get on the explosive growth going on in semiconductors. So that's where my head is. And I debate this every, every day with Armor Insiders live on the desk, just like this. Um, and I guess it's just preference. At the end of the day, I think Marvell has a unique story. So I buy not Marvell. Okay. That's my investment. But for a swing trade, for instance, I'd rather be in triple the semis and, and not have any overnight, excuse me, not have any individual stock risk, but microchip looks fantastic. I, I there, there's just so many of them Casey uh, in the semi space. It's almost like the energy space. I, I can't get them all. all right. What else you got for me? Dash. Um, look, I haven't done the research on dash and certainly they got some pretty massive, you know, revenues. So, you know, maybe, maybe there's something going on on dash. I'm an Uber guy, you know, I'm an Uber guy. I just, I think at the end of the day, Uber is eating everybody's lunch in this business, pun, <laughs> pun intended. Um, there's such unbelievable synergy inside of Uber. They've just locked it up to me and I just, I own Uber and I don't, I don't need anything else, but the chart of dash looks pretty good. 
Oops, A, X, and X. I don't know this story. Um, so I'll have to do some research on this one. Boy, the chart looks sick. You always bring good, good charts to the table, and you always make me uh, pull out a pen and paper and start writing some things down. So uh, I appreciate, uh, appreciate that. A, X, and X. Something to do some work on this week um, with Armor Insiders. So thanks for that. Deb, how are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, do you think MP is a, a, a buy more? Uh, yeah, so MP is one of my favorite uh, drilling companies. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, HP, not MP, HP. It's one of my favorite drilling companies. Let's see if we can pull this up a little quicker here. Yeah. So as Deb knows, we were um, sharing with you right in here, we were getting long uh, H, uh, HP, Helmer and Payne. This is a land drilling company. So the dynamics are without a doubt, the fundamentals are without a doubt more attractive in the offshore drilling space right now. But I just couldn't help myself. We, we own the offshore drillers. I just had to buy HP down there using the strategy I've laid out with, for you today, which is start with a day trade using day trading algorithms and techniques to get along the asset correctly and have it be up at the end of the day. I, I only want to go to sleep on profits. If I'm not making money, I'm out and I'll, I'll rethink it. Then we shifted over that day and said, we're making money. What's the algo have a uh, say uh, for our swing strategy? And it's telling us to get long. So it's confirming it. We're going to hold it overnight. Now we're making money. So we've raised our stop. And HP is rapidly becoming an investment for me. You know, um, they had earnings announcement last week. It, it wasn't the greatest announcement. They still have a lot to work out. Stock's going up. I love when I hear an earnings announcement that quote, misses the street expectations and the stock goes up anyway. I mean, it's like a gift. It's like you're on to something. It, 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 you don't have to worry. About, it's not about the earnings story. It's, it's the start of a new up cycle and energy and money's coming in. Oh, those are my favorite places to put capital. So would I buy it? Would I buy more up here? Um, look, I, I said to you earlier that I buy more um, Tidewater, for instance. Okay. The reason is there's a pennant right here and a very definable area where I would stop my loss. If it reverses and breaks down, I'll be out. Or at least I'll be out of a portion, right? I'm going to trade around the core of this position. So my stop is right in here. So if I can go back to the beginning of July, I have a almost a 30 day, you know, not 30, but you know, I mean, almost a month long consolidation and it breaks out again, I could buy more and raise my stop to the low of the consolidation, Deb. Okay. That's, that's the risk management or managing success mode of how I, um, I would say the armor investing way. Same thing for FTI, right? It's been making a base for the last month. Now it's trying to come out. Same thing for, I don't know, let's look at Schlumberger. Look at Schlumberger, right? Making a base in here. So if it takes out these highs, I can own more and raise my stop. So can I do it? I ask you, Deb, look at the chart. Can I go pay, pay up for HP right now? Where's my stop? My stop's down here. I can't go pay up here. This is just reaching for something running. There's no consolidation over a month that gives me confidence in the right stop location. So I wouldn't add to it, but I'm certainly holding it. There's no reason for me to sell it. It hasn't even, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's performing better than even I ex expected when I was buying it, to be honest with you. So I'm not a seller here. My stop is down there at the 200 day moving average. And this blue line is actually the 14 day moving average. So um, that's the most aggressive moving average I use. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not selling that in here. Amanda, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Triple Q's, your question. What is your question on the triple Q's? That's, that's what I would like to ask you. What is the question on the triple Q's? Am I a buyer up here? I'm not a buyer of the triple Q's up here. I'd rather dive into the Q's, the top seven names and find the patterns that look most attractive to me. I, I think you gotta you gotta look at Google and say that looks phenomenal. You know, you could buy it up here with a stop of these 
the low of these three days right here. So this is the earnings announcement gap up. There's your stop. If it takes out that 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 low, you don't want to be in there for the gap closure. But if it takes off in here, there's a lot of upside in Google, right? I think um, Microsoft, not so much. I don't like that pattern, okay? Um, I think NVIDIA, I, I like that pattern a lot. I'd rather buy NVIDIA. Um, what does Amazon look like? I don't know about Amazon. That's a good question on Amazon. I like the pattern here. We made money on Amazon. We we bought it cheap and booked a, booked a profit. The concern has to be the Microsoft earnings announcement where it looked like their cloud revenue was less than the street expected. If that is true for Amazon, Amazon's got a bigger problem than Microsoft. So uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'd buy that into earnings, but um, you know, we owned Meta for a lot of this run here. We booked a profit right in there, and you know, then they blew out earnings. Uh, conceivably, I could buy Meta back, but I don't know. I just think there's alpha in other places. I think there's more alpha in in dynamic growth stocks in this stage, honestly, than than adding more cues right in here. So, not exactly sure your your question there, but I'm not a buyer of the cues. Um, right now. I'm just using that as a guide. We own it cheaper. I mean, let's be honest. We own Q's. Um, back in back in here, this is when the risk monitor went green. So according to uh, how we run capital, when the risk monitor goes green, we put capital to work in the, in the nine indexes. So on the 1st of June, we got long the Q's. And they're just, you know, continuing to grind higher. And it looks great to me. Hey, Doc, how are you? Nice to see you, man. What do you got for me? Ooh, those are two really good questions. Two really good questions. And um, so it, it takes me back to UUP. If, if the dollar is breaking down, then what we've been talking about on our desk, um, Mo, is we, we've been talking about uh, the emerging markets, right? So EEM looks really good. And I think I shared this with you guys last week. The emerging markets look really, really good. There, there's your buy zone, you know, and it, and it closed right at the highs of that zone. So emerging markets look great. All the QE that's coming into the market is coming from, you know, um, China. So look at what's going on with China. I mean, theoretically, let's say we want to put money where there's QE and take money from where there's no QE. Uh, you'd be wanting to put money right now in China. You know, India is already leading. So this gets to your question on Brazil. I think EWZ looks great, right? It's, it's trying to come out in here along with the other, the other. Um, and I'm going to get to your question on, of course, Petrobras, because it's so much of of Brazil. So there's Brazil breaking out, right? Breaking the downtrend right in here. And then, so PBR is the Brazilian juggernaut when it comes to energy. So I love the idea. Um, did I see Mo that they're going to be cutting that they're, they're allowing, they're going to be doing stock buybacks, right? They have this rule in place that they have to pay out a huge amount of um, their cash flow th um, to um, shareholders in the form of dividends. And I think they restructured that did I read that correctly? I think I read that on Friday, allowing for them to start buying in stock along with a big fat dividend. So I, it's a compelling idea. It's a compelling idea. I, again, I, I can't find enough room in my portfolio for more energy. So I'd have to sell a different energy stock to buy Petrobras. And I'm not willing to do that right now, but um, I like the pattern there. And gosh, you know, Valley, I'm just going to tell you flat out, it just constantly disappoints me. So maybe I'm just worn out on the stock. Every time I look at it, I say, now's the time. And I look at it. Luckily, I don't buy it. But every time I say to myself, I think now's time for Valley, I look at it and the stock goes down. So now I've gotten into this habit of whenever I think it's time to buy Valley, I don't buy it. And I walk away from the screen for a couple of days and I see what happened. And like every time it goes down. So I don't know. I, I, I thought the time to buy Valley was last what was it like? Was this Friday? So it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Monday, it looked like it was time to buy Valley. And all it did was give it all away in the next, the last three days of the, of, of the week. If I'm going to buy Valley, the first thing I'm going to do is buy BHP. That's my favorite story. There's, there's really three of these names, BHP, Rio, 
and Valley. They tend to all kind of trade together. BHP, if I can't make money in BHP, I can't make money in Valley or, or Rio. So if I ever pull the trigger, it's going to be here. And, and even then, look, I, I thought about buying it. You can see it's already painted green because I was talking about it on the desk this week. And all it did was give it all away. I just, I don't know. I also have my eye on tech. I like tech resources a lot. And that chart looks really good. Whew. So that would go into that 25% of my portfolio that I want to be commodity related. You know, um, I know some guys were asking me on tw Twitter and stock twits today um, about um, the lithium stocks too. You know, li li there's LIT. That looks like it's coiling for a move in there. I mean, that, that looks pretty good right down there. LIT looks pretty good to me. And so that's one way to play it. Just own the, the, the lithium stocks as a group, you know, or do you go with, you know, the big, oops, big names. Oops. See, live, it looks terrible. I don't get that. I, I don't get that. Albemarle, these don't look that good. So I don't, I don't know. You know, so I, somebody was asking me about M, MP. Uh, I, I don't, I just, I've traded MP in the past. I made money trading it back there. Um, I, I don't like it at all right down here. So I've got nothing for you on, on MP. Besides Sprott physical silver, Deb asks, thoughts on actually holding one ounce physical silver? Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Um, I would, I would ask you, and you can think about this and you can put comments in this section later, uh, during the week. If you think about it and you want to chat with me about it, anybody can do that. You know, feel free. If you miss this call live, just ask a question in the comment section and I'll get, I'll get to it during the week. But, um, my question for you, Deb is why? Why, 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 why do you want to stack silver bars in your house? What do you, what are you really saying by stacking silver bars in your house? I think in order to stack silver bars in my house, I have to expect Armageddon. Literally. I mean, I have to expect Armageddon. So if you're asking me, should I put silver bars in my house? Cause I think, you know, the financial markets as we know it are going to implode then. Okay. I mean, you know, I got some gold coins. <laughs> I got some gold coins. I've had them for a long time, but, um, I, I, I like Sprott physical silver. And you know, if you hold it for a year, you can redeem it for silver. They'll deliver silver to any bank you want, to any to house and a vault if you want. Theoretically, I mean, I've never seen them do it. I've never seen anybody ask for it. But theoretically, if you hold it for a year, you can then demand delivery of the silver. So I don't know. I, I like to be able to, I like to be more liquid, Deb. Not to mention that you can get screwed by market makers trying to buy physical. You know, they'll have some pretty fat premiums in there. So if you're going to buy physical, you got to find the right dealer who's not totally killing you on the spread. That's my thought there. What do you think about dollar cost average VPI? Total stock market ETF and VOO. All right. Well, um, on a monthly basis, long term, I've got no interest in that. No interest in that. I don't ever dollar cost average anything. I don't just do that for a reason to do it. I just don't, I don't do that. Um, I'm too much of a active portfolio manager to, to do something that passive. I feel like I'm at the whim of the market and I don't like that at all. Like, why would I pay up for the S and P right in here? Why would I do that? You know, I just, I, I'd rather do it. Like, so first of all, you're talking to a guy, I, I ran hedge funds. I've been running private capital 30 years. I, I'm running my own money. What I love to do and get up in the morning. And what do I do? Deb research. I want to find the next big stock. That's what gets me up in the morning. That's what excites me. I want to day trade. I day trade the indexes. We're on an unbelievable tear in the last two months. I'm going to, 
I'm, I'm right now. This, this right here, right in here, is the first edition of the Armor Day Trading Playbook I'm putting together. As we're just making money, literally, we're, we're not trading every day. We don't day trade. We smart trade. All we do is trade the S&P and we trade triple the S&P, right? So the way I run my personal portfolio, I have three distinct categories of investment. I have 30% earmarked for day trading the S&P only, 30% swing trade, 30% invest. I invest in dynamic growth stocks. I swing trade commodity names, okay? And I'm going to share with Armor Insiders this this playbook when I'm done. There's just so many ways the market can behave every day. If you think about it, it's not, it's not, it's not a concept too hard to, to, to grasp. It's like a football game. There, there's just so many plays from the line of scrimmage. Forget about, forget about the trick plays. There's just so many plays from the line of scrimmage. It's either a passing play or a running play, right? It's off tackle. It's a draw. I mean, there's just so many things. There's a post pattern. It's crossing route. There's just so many things you can do. It's the same for the stock market, the way it's going to trade every day. The market opens flat, it opens up, gap up, or it opens gap down. And from that open, there are plays that we identify that make money at a high probability of the time, and the rest of the time we don't trade. So the key is to figure out what days to get long the market, and we use triple the index, so we really max out those days, and what days to avoid completely. So I digress right now. But um, this is what is the lifeblood that gets me up in the morning. And when you say to me, should we dollar cost average VOO, I've just fallen asleep. I mean, you know, all of a sudden, narcolepsy. I, I just, I can't even keep my eyes open when you ask me that question. <laughs> so maybe it's valuable to some people, you know, but dollar cost averaging doesn't make any sense to me. Certainly not at the end of every month. Like why would I just pay up for the, like for the market? I mean, I, if I was to do it and I would never do it, but let's pretend I was to do it. I would, I would buy right and I'd be making money. So let's, let's, first of all, I would buy right and be making money. So I would get long. What did I say tonight? There's three stages to investing. And I'd start with a day trade. The day trade makes money. So now I'm in VOO and I've made money for the day. I look at the swing trading algorithm. It says, yes, this is a time to try to swing trade. So I hold it overnight. Then it starts going up. Great. Now I'm making money in the position and I can manage success. And you say to me, okay, every month I want to put more money in the market. I'd say, okay, leave it in the money market fund. And when the market comes down, to a major move in average, and you get another risk on entry point using a, a swing strategy algorithm, put more money to work. That's how I would do it. I would do it on weakness in an uptrend. And I get out of all of it if the market implodes. I mean, why go through that? Why go through the emotional devastation of having your net worth, you know, get destroyed in a given year? I mean, we're all trying to avoid that. And we all get trapped in it sometimes. I mean, me too. I have some years where I just I struggle. It happens. But I'm just saying, you're, to answer your question, that's how I would do it. I would get on a, a day trade that works, swing trade, yep, start making money. And then when I say trade around the core, that's kind of what I mean. You don't want to sell any, so you're not going to sell any at targets, but you would only buy after the pullback to the key uptrend, and then you would add more, and then it would take off. So you might be dollar cost averaging every three months instead of every month in a big uptrend. It runs, then it pulls back for a month, and you add to it, and then it runs that's that's more interesting to me than than your than what what you asked me there. Um, hey, David, how are you, man? Nice to see you. How do you feel about uh, GNTX? That chart looks good. Let's go look at some charts that you're bringing to our table here. I mean, I mean, the chart looks pretty reasonable. Um, I, not, I can't buy it here. I mean, I, you got to get real good. So manufacturers, automatic dimming rear view mirrors, not bad earnings and revenue, 26% revenue growth, 50% earnings growth last quarter. That's not bad. So maybe it's reaccelerating. Um, 
no, nothing wrong with that pattern, but, uh, you know, but obviously if we go over again, David, the armor investing way. So we start with the right day trade in, in, an, in an asset that could give us a swing trading entry point. Okay. So if we're honest with ourselves, we know that there's no swing trading entry point up here. Okay. This is already taken off the entry point and I'm not running the algo right now, but somewhere in here, the algo is going to give us a risk on entry point. Okay. That, that down, down in here, trying to get a, whoops. Down in here is where we should have been buying the stock, right? And now it's taken off. So you want to try to buy assets down. You want to invest when you're on or near the 250 day moving average. And I use an algorithm for my entry points. Okay. And you don't want to put money to work when the stock is about four standard deviations above. That's what this line is four standard deviations above the um, standard 200 day moving average, right? So an institution doesn't pay up here. The institution's buying the moving average and that's how you have to behave, right? So put it on the watch list, watch it. And either the moving averages come up to it or it pulls back and then you get a whole nother entry point. Um, Beezer, don't ask me about a home stock, please. What am I going to do with that, brother? I can't believe these stocks are going to the moon. I've totally missed housing. I've totally missed it. Just did not understand the dynamics at all. And, um, you know, thank God I'm not short. <laughs> I just don't get it. I told, I, hey, mea culpa, mea culpa. I had no idea that the, that the, the housing stocks would go ballistic in a market where interest rates are going up dramatically. So, getting a mortgage on a house is incredibly difficult. Like I totally misunderstood the dynamics of the housing business. And I certainly can't go after it now. So that's going to happen without me. Ooh, Brazilian company provides financial. That's interesting. That chart looks pretty compelling. And look at the earnings revenue growth. Okay. I'm going to write that one down. We're going to have to do a little work on that. S T N E. Look at the earnings. I mean, almost 400% earnings growth and 23% revenue growth, 53%, 72%. So revenues are growing, earnings are growing, stocks on its behind. And, and we've already talked about how we like Brazilian companies. So there's a winner right there. That's something to do some work on. I, I like that idea a lot. I just wrote that one down. Oh, thanks a lot for that, Mo. Yeah. Um, I was asking you that before they just announced. So they pay 20%, they pay over 20% dividend. The board approved uh, at least 40% of free cash flow for dividends. Let's talk about stimulus package. Yeah. I, and I, I'm pretty sure I saw that their, that, that their board approved the buyback program. So it looks pretty good. All right. Let's um, round out on um, <laughs> Festeroso, man. Nice to see you, brother. It's uh, eight o'clock and I got a little girl wants to uh, sit down and chat with me as we hook a rug together. So I'm going to go spend some time with my daughter, but um, let's just uh, leave on this note. We can, we have to, we have to talk cannabis before we leave. That's just um, always, um, you know, uh, uh, an idea we like to discuss. Now, I, I thought it was going to be a huge investing opportunity and just, the government's just botched it to such an unbelievable degree. I don't know what it is now. So do I have an interest in buying, um, Tell Ray, I totally, I don't. I mean, I totally don't. Twenty percent, twenty percent revenue growth though is interesting. It is interesting. So, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, Festro. So, I am going to what? And what, what's your first name, Festero? So, um, I am going to do some research next week. Because I know there's a bunch of guys on our desk who, who are armor insiders who want to, um, who are interested in this idea. And, and I'm interested in cannabis too. Right? You know, we've just had to avoid this entire collapse and which we've been doing. And so I'm just seeing, I, I, look, we made a lot of money on cannabis and then we went to cash as it started to unravel and we haven't been back since. So I'm waiting for an excuse. Honestly, I think it may just be. U.S. government reschedules. Stocks are all up 100% that day, and I'm buying because they're going to go to the moon. I, I don't know. But how did Telray grow its revenue 20%? That's something we're going to have to go take a peek at. Sequential revenue growth. 
was a pretty big jump too. So I'm going to, I'm going to listen to that conference call and I'll get back to you uh, next week. So ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate as always your time with me. Go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to share the channel with your friends. Um, if you'd like to join us on the desk live as we're actually executing, we would love to have you right there. Armorinvesting.com, A-R-M-R, investing.com. Check it out and see if you want to join us. In the meantime, you all have a great Sunday night. Armor Insiders, 845 tomorrow morning for our morning meeting. Get ourselves ready for the trading session. And um, the rest of you, I will see you maybe maybe four o'clock, a couple days next week with what stocks we're buying. But if not, definitely next Sunday, 7 p.m. We'll do it all again. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.